Hi, my name is Yong Rong Sin. My title for my final project is Feasibility Study of the Inflatable Buoyancy Unit in Lifting the Jackets of Aging Fixed Offshore Platform. Oil and gas industry is one of the biggest industries by revenue globally. An offshore platform is one of the key assets during the process of extracting the crude oil and natural gas, which is found under the seabed, no matter in the shallow or in the deep sea. However, the crude oil and natural gas under the seabed will be depleted or no longer commercially available in one day. In order to minimize its environmental impacts, as well as to avoid obscuring the navigation of marine vessels, the offshore platform that is no longer useful has to be removed from the site. As you may know, offshore platforms are one of the bigger structures that we have built, especially the bottom-supported offshore platforms. So, to remove it from the site, we need a helping hand, the heavy lift vessels, or HLVs for short. HLVs are like cranes floating on the water which can lift very heavy objects. In the removal of the bottom supported offshore platform, the platform's top side can either be removed all at once or be removed in separate modules by the HLVs while the jacket supporting the platform is cut and lifted as a whole or by section if the jacket is too large or heavy. However, HLVs are expensive and difficult to operate which increases the cost and manpower of removing the offshore platform. So, here comes a question. Is there any other way to remove the jacket of the platform, such as buoyancy bags? To find out the answer, the following objectives were set for this research. First is to investigate the relationship between the platform jacket size and the buoyancy bag size. Second is to determine the optimum combination and position of the buoyancy bags to be installed onto the jacket. And the last objective is to visualize the configuration of buoyancy bags using SSCS software. This research focuses on the loads acting on the jacket, Archimedes principle, stability, and also the specification of the CFS inflatable buoyancy unit, which will help in achieving the objectives. To determine the feasibility of the buoyancy bags in removing the jacket, first, the relationship between total volume of the buoyancy bag and the buoyant force to lift the jacket was determined. This was done by using the buoyancy calculator created with Microsoft Excel. The buoyancy calculator requires two parameters, which are the weight of the jacket and the density of seawater. This will give the minimum total volume needed for the buoyancy bags to lift the jacket. By computing the minimum total volume of buoyancy bags for a range of weight of the jacket, or payload of the buoyancy bags as shown here, a graph of minimum total volume against payload can be plotted. The buoyancy ratio for this case is maintained as 1, but for the next analysis, the same relationship was determined for different buoyancy ratios, ranging from 1 to 1.15. This was done by adding one more column for buoyancy ratio before the column for volume. The two columns were repeated for buoyancy ratio of 1.05, 1.10, and 1.15. Lastly, the relationship between the total volume of the buoyancy bags and the payload for different buoyancy ratios can be represented in the form of a graph. To find out the feasibility of using existing buoyancy bags in the market, the data sheet for C-flex buoyancy bags has been studied, in which this equation was derived. This equation is a linear equation, with A to I as the number of buoyancy bags of the specific model. The coefficient for each variable is the difference between the lifting capacity and the weight of the buoyancy bags. For example, the value of 34,700 is the difference between the lifting capacity and the weight of the buoyancy bag model 35 ton IBU. And so A is the number of 35 ton IBU to be used. The difference can be calculated using Microsoft Excel as shown, with the lifting capacity and weight in kilograms. Note that the buoyant force on the left hand side of the equation is converted into kilograms to match the unit on the right hand side of the equation. So, the submerged weight of the jacket needs to be converted as well. 
the solver add-in was used to solve the equation and return a possible solution. These steps were repeated with the value increasing by 100 until eight suitable combinations of buoyancy bags were determined, with the buoyancy ratios as shown. The buoyancy ratio can be calculated in the next column. Once the eight combinations were acquired, two separate configurations were proposed for each of the combinations, with one installing the largest buoyancy bags at the bottom section of the jacket, and one installing the largest buoyancy bags at the center section of the jacket. Then, the best configuration was chosen based on the stability and number of buoyancy bags used. Now, I'm going to discuss the outcome of my research. For the relationship between the minimum total volume of buoyancy bags and the payload, it can be observed from this graph that the relationship is linear, with the volume increasing linearly with the payload. This graph also splits the area into four regions, which represents the category of offshore platform based on tonnage, a wet category of the platform. This graph suggests that it is possible to use buoyancy bags to lift the jacket of platform of all wet categories, from lightweight to super heavy. The next graph shows the same relationship between the minimum total volume of buoyancy bags and the payload, but at different buoyancy ratios. As you can see here, the increasing buoyancy ratio increases the gradient of the curve, and the relationship remains to be linear. This further suggests that the lifting operation of the jacket can be done with the use of buoyancy bags. As for the combination of buoyancy bags to be used, this table summarizes the result. With the buoyancy ratio and the total number of buoyancy bags used at the last two columns of the table, these combinations were selected based on the total number of buoyancy bags used as it will be impractical to use massive amounts of buoyancy bags to lift the jacket. You may notice that some of the buoyancy ratios, when rounded off to nearest two decimal places, it will become the value of the next ratio. For example, the buoyancy ratio of the fourth combination with the value of 1.0372 should be rounded off to 1.04 instead of 1.03. This is because I choose to round out instead of round off to ensure that all buoyancy ratios have one combination that has a logical number of buoyancy bags. If the buoyancy ratio of the fourth combination is rounded off to 1.04, then there will be no suitable combination for the buoyancy ratio of 1.03 and two combinations for the buoyancy ratio of 1.04. The next 16 figures show the proposed configurations. Two for each of the combinations. The configurations that install largest buoyancy bags at the lower section of the jacket were proposed to minimize the risk that the divers have to face when installing the buoyancy bags at that depth, as well as to shorten the time to install the buoyancy bags. It will take longer time to install multiple buoyancy bags compared to a single larger bag at the same depth since the divers have to descend and ascend to get the buoyancy bags from the surface vessels. For your information, the safe ascent rate for divers is typically around 10 meters per minute to avoid the divers suffering from decompression sickness. The configurations that install largest buoyancy bags at the center section of the jacket were proposed to increase stability of the jacket once the jacket floats at the sea level in horizontal orientation. These configurations were proposed with the assumption that the center of gravity or COG of the jacket is at around the half of the jacket's height and closer to the face where buoyancy bags will be installed. By considering the stability and number of buoyancy bags to be used, this configuration has been selected as it uses the least amount of buoyancy bags, with the largest one installed near to the COG of the jacket. From these results, a few conclusions can be drawn. First, as the relationship between volume of buoyancy bags and weight of jacket is linear, it is theoretically feasible to use buoyancy bags in the decommissioning of fixed offshore platforms of all wet categories in the effort to reduce the cost of decommissioning. 
Second, the configuration selected is considered to be the optimized configuration with the highest stability and least number of buoyancy bags used. The visualization of the configuration has been done as shown previously. However, further research is also recommended to confirm the capabilities of buoyancy bags in the decommissioning of fixed offshore platforms. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening.